Good evening. Um, thank you. Uh, I will try to give a short story of my experience during a genocide in Rwanda. Genocide was a Finnish two things. Um, as you heard, I was born in 1980. Uh, during genocide, I was almost 14. By the end, I was just turning 14. It was my birthday on the 10th of July. Uh, 20 years old, uh, it is hard to talk about it. At the moment, we're talking about 20 years after the genocide. But yes, to me, time, you cannot put time or price to what we have lost, what I have lost. 20 years is still like yesterday. In my mind, whenever I remember it, it's still like it happened yesterday. I can still smell the air of the time. I can still see what happened. I was just turning <coughs> and getting my teens, and I had a big family. Uh, on my mother's side, it was, I lost about 45 members. That's my mother's side. On my father's side, it's the same. <coughs> and after genocide, you don't just lose one family. You lost your mother, you lost your extended family, which was very difficult. Uh, my mother was murdered. She was uh, drowned in the river Nyamarongo. Uh, I never buried her. I never saw her to make it. And most of my immediate family who lived in the Itaram, they were all drowned in the river. During genocide, uh, I was in the Mirambo, uh, where I stayed with my uncle. Uh, he had five children, his wife, his housemate. They were all killed. They didn't survive. So I'm standing here actually talking as one person who came out of one big family who didn't make it. And the reason I didn't make it is because, uh, as you know, the genocide was planned and prepared. The, when they came to kill in our, in our family, they had a list of names, and I was a spare guest. That's how I managed to come out, because they didn't have my name on the paper. And it, I, at that time, it took me a whole day to figure out where to go. I was new in the city. I didn't know where left or right was. But at the end of the day, I, uh, I found a place to stay, the duration of genocide. Uh, I never saw my family again after that. And uh, it is very, very difficult to look back and say it's 20 years because never 20 years. 20 years after I have a child, <clears throat> I'm not even sure how my mother is pictured. It's, it's very, very difficult for me. After the genocide was ended, uh, it's, I don't know if I can, with the time I have, I cannot give you the short time of time of genocide, but it was hard for me to accept my mother was, was killed. Although I knew they were, they were taken in the river, and I kept thinking to myself that maybe she swam, or maybe she ended up somewhere. I went where we used to live, and while I was standing on the top of the hill, figuring out what was happening, I saw a woman coming towards me, and she was wearing my mother's dress start my mother's talk and I thought it was my mother because I was crying and when she approached me it was not my mother. At that moment my past was stolen from me. My present didn't make sense and the future it was not there either. Now I think back I say why didn't I take those clothes? Because at least I would have something that belonged to my belonged to her. All I did, even my whole body, I couldn't carry it. I just curled my head. I walked away. It took me 10 years to go back. The place I was, uh, uh, where I grew up, up today, they, there's no survivor. They finished ever. Even survivor who survived is like me who was not in the area. 
So I can say that 20 years old, yes, we are building, but what happened in Rwanda, it was not something that happened as a surprise, it was well planned. It happened in eyes of everyone, international community. It, it, it Rwandans who did it and it's Rwandans who stopped it. We still have a heavy road to carry with us. So I'm standing here as a survivor to tell you the story of what happened. I have to emphasize that it is hard for me to talk about it because even for me it is hard to understand it. And it reminds me, I will finish on this note, a man who was killing in Nyamirambo, he shouted and he said, I will kill a Tusi, a child of a who will be born in, will be asking how did Tusi look like. And once I finish, even if he survived, nobody will believe what he said. And if I tell you what I saw, sometimes even my mind cannot take it. Sometimes I, will under, I ask myself whether you actually take it. Uh, we have to work, to work hard to make sure that it's never, ever again. Not to Rwandans and not to anyone.